Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and I'd like to tell you about one of the typical flight test missions we did out at Edwards in the late 70s. This uh, particular one uh, that I tended to do uh, quite a bit because uh, we had to acquire a lot of data was tank jettison on the F-16. Now, we had to do a lot of weapon separation tests, jettison tests, and there's a, been quite a bad history of uh, um, items coming off an aircraft that you are jettisoning, you know, like dropping a bomb or dropping a tank. But there's been a lot of issues of uh, these uh, bombs or tanks actually impacting the aircraft after you jettison them. Now, most people think, and, and for normal speed, when you drop a tank uh, or a bomb or anything like that, it pretty much goes straight down under the aircraft. Now, okay, this is F-22. You got me there, but... Uh, I didn't have any good pictures of the tanks coming off the F-16, but um, they're hinged at the rear, so as the tank comes down, uh, it tends to pivot, so it tends to push itself away from the aircraft. Now, the test we were doing uh, involved an asymmetrical jettison of a 675-gallon tank at 1.1 Mach, 675 knots. Now, I was flying the T-38 as the, in chase position, and I had a photographer in the back seat. And this was a, a I'd say, quite challenging mission because we had to do a descent uh, into the uh, range area, about a 30-degree uh, dive. Uh, then we'd do a, a, it ended up being about a 3G pull, and just after we pulled out, we would have to, uh, or the test aircraft would start a countdown. And he'd give you basically a three, two, one, and then he'd jettison. Well, the interesting thing about this, and 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 I flew this many times, um, was that when the tank came off, the F-16 actually rolled, and and the tank we were using was on the uh, left side of the aircraft, and that's my chase position on the left side, not like you see here on the right. I was on the left, and when the tank came off, the F-16 would roll 90 degrees on its side. And this had happened several times, and I finally asked the test pilot, I said, are, are you um, doing anything special there? I mean, are, are you rolling for any reason? And he said, no, I'm trying to keep it level. But when that tank comes off at that high of an indicated airspeed, 675 knots, 1.1 Mach, the, it just pushes the aircraft 90 degrees uh, into a right bank. So that was quite interesting. And... We always had very good film coverage of this coming off the... Now, I must tell you, the, the photographers we had back then, um, and I'm sure they're still good now, were excellent. Um, they would hold that 18-pound Hasselblad, cam Hasselblad camera uh, at 200 frames a second, and would do the little descent, and they'd just get a couple seconds to stabilize, and away the tank would go. Now, interestingly enough, uh, I had chased this a lot, and on one of the missions, they did not have a photographer available. He was going out on a, another flight. But we were down at test ops, and they said, hey, you've flown this a lot. Um, we'll give you the camera, and you sit in the back seat, and you take it. And I go, okay, how hard could it be? Well, uh, it wasn't too bad on the 30-degree uh, descent dive into the test point. But as we started to pull the 3Gs, that camera course got a little heavy. And uh, you usually start to uh, turn it on during the pull because the release is coming quickly. So... We're doing the 3G pull, the camera's coming down, I'm trying to hold it, and then of course as we come back out off the G, uh, you bobble just a little bit, and you've got to be in position, so that camera bobbles too. So I'm filming it and I'm going, oh my gosh, this isn't as easy as, uh, as I thought. And uh, I met the uh, photographers the next day and kind of said, well, did the, uh, did the airplane pass through the frame anywhere uh, during my filming? And they kind of laughed and said, uh, yeah, it was close. But uh, anyway, I got a lot more respect for them because I would fly chase where we'd do uh, rolls over uh, the vehicle and they'd be shooting through the top of the canopy and, and the, uh, the pictures were just amazing. Now one time we got back from the test mission, I got a call from the test pilot. And I knew the, I knew the test pilot, Dave, pretty well. And he's a good guy, but he calls and he is angry. He says, I had damage to my aircraft because after the uh, weapon separation, the, the tank in this case, you come back up, you look the over the aircraft over and make sure that, uh, you know, there's no damage on the aircraft. And I told him I didn't see any damage. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, what did I miss? So he says, you come on down here. I'm going to show you the damage to my aircraft that you missed. So 
I go down there and, and uh, Dave had a very dry sense of humor. And uh, we're walking out the airplane and we're getting closer and closer. And I'm on the side that uh, the tank uh, departed and I am looking and looking and I see nothing. And he walks up to the uh, stable leader there in the back and he points his finger to this little nick in the stable later that you could barely see from a foot away. I guess one of the instrumentation wires attached to the tank had come off and uh, cut into the uh, stable later there. He's pointing at that, he looks at me and he starts laughing. I go, okay, good one, Dave. Anyway, flew that mission a lot. It was very interesting, a lot of fun. They got a lot of uh, test points there and we showed that you could jettison uh, the tank at 675 knots, 1.1 Mach, and it would safely depart the aircraft. Thanks for watching.